In this episode, I'll learn new things. Wait, I thought they do water cooling. I found that I need to go to the gym and do some leg presses. Well, this is something different. And that I definitely shouldn't apply for the voice. Smooth operator. Smooth operator. <laughs> Hello fellow Thermac lovers, Matthew here. Being in the PC industry as a reviewer for the past 10 years or so, you can only imagine my face when I heard that Azatec was releasing a sim racing pedal set. Yeah, from my perspective, where my knowledge about Azatec was only connected to their liquid cooling products, this turn in added product offering was truly a random thing coming out of nowhere. Like when Gotifi got two points in the Suzuka Grand Prix, but it ended up being the perfect crossover episode, because why not? It's always good to have competition on the market, especially if they're good, which Azatec proved to be in the past years. And this one in particular touches the higher spectrum of it, especially with this Invicta pedal set that I have here. It's definitely something I was looking forward to trying it out, being it because of its build quality, but most importantly because of the fact that it has a brake system based on hydraulics. So yeah, this was not just another ordinary piece of sim racing gear. When I found out whose foot has graced these pedals, I was in awe. Magnuson. Kevin Magnuson. Okay, not these ones exactly, but you get the point. Yes, our favorite Danish store like Blonde F1 Driver God worked on this pedal set. He was of the utmost importance when it comes to tweaking them so we can have that proper F1 pedal experience. And I quote what Azatex said, Kevin is our master of F1 feel. That has to be one of the coolest thing about it. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to do it. I hope he'll stay long enough in the F1 for this joke to be relevant. <laughs> of course, I cannot tell you if that end result is really true to that feel. We can only hold them for their word as I haven't actually driven an F1 car, but maybe one day I'll get a chance. Huh, what you say, Azitek? You, me, an F1 car? I can go for a GT Class 2, I'm modest. And I promise I won't end up in the Barry R. Thank you Super GT for that meme. You can also help me out in reaching that goal by subscribing. Let's try hitting 30,000 by the end of this year. We are not that far and I think we can do it. I promise I'll use my power for good. I won't just stuff my mouth with tiny sandwiches if I end up in an F1 paddock, probably. Anyhow, a lot of other professionals besides Kevin had their hands, their hands, is that correct? Had their feet onto these pedals, helping out in development. Drivers like Waldemar Eriksson and Dennis Lind. So yeah, my expectations were quite high, but putting it aside, I was caught off guard by completely something else. Nothing like a good old pedal stomping when driving a sports car. Well, take that what you know about it, especially the braking part of it, and throw it into a bin. Although I somewhat expected this to be a completely different experience, it still wasn't anything close to what I thought it would be. That's because it was my first proper hydraulic based brake system experience, I haven't tried anything remotely similar to it, nor something like a GT racing car. Honestly, at first I thought that something was not quite right. I thought it had a safety clip or something like that, because it just wouldn't budge at all. But after a little bit of research, it turned out, yeah, that's normal for hydraulic based brake system. And now I finally understand why all those F1 drivers can basically crack a nut with their heels as they need to put over 150 kilograms of pressure onto a brake pedal. No, that's the left. The right is the... Right is gas, left is brake. And that's all well and good, but what's the end result of having a system like this? Well, buttery smooth input. When you look at it through the eyes of the software, that being the Azitex Race Hub, you can see how granular and progressive the input can be, although you feel like you're trying to open up a fresh can of Ivar based on how much force you're putting into it, making you at first think that it cannot be that good as it really is. But even if you don't want to push it that hard, you can recalibrate the maximum pressure point for your 100% pedal position. The same goes for the acceleration pedal, and this is also useful in cases where you want to readjust the pedal's angle since you must compensate for it. And that's pretty much it in terms of the software, nothing more to it. Besides that and firmware updates, you can set the RGB color lighting on the footrest. Yes, it has that too. How else are they going to match it to their water cooler lineup? 
Kidding aside, I like it. It's nicely diffused. And this McLaren Papaya color suits other details around it really good. Speaking of that, you have the ability to adjust the angle of the pedals, especially since they come in a really almost upright 90 degree angle, but thankfully everything is toolless. You only need to undo or adjust a few screws and retainer parts here and there, release a clip in the case of the brake pedals, that's pretty much it. It's a 15 to 30 second job at most. You also have the option to change the elastomer for that first bite point feel of the brake pedal, I've tried all three and the white, middle one, suited me the best. As you notice, I don't have a clutch pedal here, but you can add it to your shopping cart if you want to. And although as of now I cannot speak about it from my personal experience, there are plenty of reviews out there about it. First that comes to mind is one from the Boosted Media channel. The build quality is exceptional. The only gripe I had is that they have extremely grippy pedal plates. You cannot just slide the foot a bit in order to reposition yourself in case you grabbed it wrong. You need to release it, remove the feet, and then adjust yourself. This can be fixed by 3D printing your own plates or buying their version of it, and hopefully they'll include it in their bundle in the future. It is truly easy to replace them as there are just a couple of screws, and you can also reposition the plates as you please since it has a multitude of installation holes. Drop a like if you want to see this Lamborghini Kun where is it? Here. Lamborghini Countach finished for the next video. It gives that little bit of morale boost. But Matt, why would I get this pedal set next to something like Fanatec CSL Elite pedals? What does it provide that others cannot? Well, in theory and in practice, once you get a hold of it, it's pretty simple. It lets you be more granular in your braking performance, corner entries and exits, enabling you to nail down that perfect braking technique, or to come to it eventually, which can help shave a lot of time because when you multiply the gain with the number of corners, it quickly adds up to a lot of lost tens, even seconds. The catch here is that this is reshaping how you use your brake, that instead of you learning and muscle memorizing its brake performance based on the travel distance of the pedal, you instead learn how much force to put onto the pedal in relation to the braking performance that you're going to get from it. That's the main reason, as you probably now see, it doesn't have that much travel distance. This again leads us back to the fact that this will enable you to be more granular and precise with your braking. I'm planning to do a separate video on this topic, comparing my lap times between these pedals and let's say something more mainstream like Logitech G923 pedals and see what's the difference, is there any, and how noticeable it is, so you can take everything into account and decide if that makes sense for your budget and if you're willing to go for it to unlock that last piece of performance potential. So make sure to subscribe for that one to come and of course for more bad puns and even worse jokes you can help me share them with other people. Until then, see you in the track. That has to be one of the coolest. I couldn't do it with a straight face. <laughs> couldn't.